Dear friends, we are so happy that we can be here together around the world of the living God, especially in least the last days of earth's history. And I'm so privileged that I can be here among you, those that uh, love the Bible. And uh, during this time, I will not preach. I enjoy myself uh, very much studying the Word of God. So in this time that we are going to spend together, we are going to address topics that are being related with these last days in which we are living. We are going to start a series through God's grace that is going to be called War in Heaven. And our topic tonight is going to have the name Star Wars. So I invite you to open the Bible at the first text that we are going to read that is being found in the book of John chapter 13, and we are going to read verse 19. There are many questions that the people they have in their minds today. And some of these questions are being related with the future. And what is going to happen in a near time. Jesus is giving an answer to these questions that the people are having. And uh, we need to be encouraged by what we are reading from the Bible here. So I'm going to read from John chapter 13, starting from verse 19. The Bible says, Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. One of the, the ways that God is using to tell us that he is the true God is when he is speaking to us about the future events that we are going to see on this earth. Listen what the Bible is saying in the book of Isaiah chapter 46. And we are going, we are going to read from verse 9 and verse 10. Isaiah chapter 46. And we are going to read from verse 9 and 10. Listen what the Bible is saying here. Here is being uh, reminded a very important principle as we are going to study uh, last day events. Starting from verse 9. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times the things that they are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Here we are, being, we are being told a very important principle when God is trying to tell us what we are going to see in these last days. And we are looking at verse 9 especially. I am God, there is no other God like me, declaring the end from the beginning. Again and again in the history of this world, God allowed a certain events to take place again and again. Repetition is a way that God is using for us to understand what is going to take place in these times. Let's read this principle again in the Bible, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, and we are going to read from there verse 15. This principle that God is using to teach us what is going to happen in these last days, history repeats itself. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and we are going to start reading from verse 15. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be had already been, and God required that which is past. So we are seeing very clearly here in this Bible passage, that God is allowing history to repeat again and again. With these Bible verses that we have read so far, we want to establish this foundation very clear in our mind as we are starting this Bible topic in the seri series War in Heaven. Tonight we are going to study Star Wars. This foundation is very simple for us to understand. And the idea it is, when we are dealing with these last day events on earth's history, God is trying to tell us that what we are going to see in the future 
has already been in the past. So if we want to understand what is going to take place in these last days, in this battle between good and evil, in the last days, God will ask us to study what had happened in the beginning on the war between good and evil in the first place. Let's go in the Bible in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 12, and we are going to study from there from verse 7. Our topic tonight, Star Wars. Revelation chapter 12, and we are going to study from verse 7. The Bible says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. The old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So here in the Bible, we are, we are seeing the first time this war that started between good and evil, this war started in heaven. But the Bible is telling us also in this chapter, in Revelation chapter 12, if we are looking in verse 12, the Bible is saying clearly that this war that started in heaven was moved upon this earth. Let's read together Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the, the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So this battle that started in heaven is moving right now and is already taking place here in action in this earth. Now, as we have studied from the Bible so far, the Bible tells us clearly that we need to understand the end from the beginning. So the beginning of this world in heaven, two classes, they have been developed in heaven. So we will see the same thing in these last days. Only two groups will be developed. Those that are going to stand near God and those that are going to stand near the great deceiver, Satan. Look what the Bible is saying regarding this world in heaven. As we are looking, let's see the two groups that are being developed in heaven at the beginning. Let's look again in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. Let's stop. So two groups, they have been developed in heaven when this war was taking place for the first time. Michael and his angels, and then the dragon and his angels. Let's ask ourselves one first question. Who is this dragon that is being depicted here in the Bible? The Bible is giving us clearly the answer in the same chapter. Let's read together Revelation chapter 12 from here, verse 9. Revelation chapter 12, and we are going to read from here verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So who is this dragon that started a war in heaven? In this company that we have spoken about, this dragon is no other than Satan, the devil, the one that is going against God. So we have Satan and his angels and Michael and his angels in this first war that started at the beginning in heaven. But there is another question that we need to address right now from the Bible. Who is Michael according to the Bible? Some people, they have um, wrong ideas about Michael. Who is Michael? So we'll let the Bible to explain herself regarding this topic. 
Let's go together in the book of Jude, near the book of Revelation. We have a book called Jude that is having only one chapter. And here in the book of Jude, we are going to read together starting at verse 9. The book of Jude. Here we are going to see again this term, Michael. Let's read together. Jude verse 9. Yet Michael the archangel... When contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, thus not bringing against him a relating accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. So we see here again this name, Michael, this term Michael that was being uh, presented in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. But here we are, being, we are seeing this word attached, Michael the Archangel. In the Greek language, this word Archangel means the one that is ruling above the all angels. He is the ruler, the captain, the general of the army of God of angels. Now, this Michael the Archangel, the Bible is saying that he's not only having power against the devil and his angels, because he was the one that took Satan out from heaven and through him here on this earth. But the Bible is saying here in Jude verse 9 that also Michael the archangel is having the power of resurrecting the dead people. Here we see Michael the archangel having power to resurrect Moses. Moses who died, but the Bible is saying clearly that right now Moses is up there in heaven. Let's read again Jude verse 9 as we are going to study this topic from the Bible, Star Wars. Look what the Bible is saying, Jude 9 again. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. So Michael is having sufficient power to resurrect the dead. Let's go again in the Bible and study more about Michael, who is Michael, and who is that one that was having at the beginning when this war was starting in heaven between good and evil, sufficient power to take Satan out from heaven with his angels. Let's go together in the book of First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 4, and we are going to read from verse, from verse 16. And if possible, I will recommend you to take notes. You know, a short pen is better than a short memory. So you have the possibility, take notes, put these Bible verses in the mind, because we need to give an account for what we are believing. And everything that we are going to study in these occasions, it is going to be only from the Word of God. Amen? Listen what the Bible is saying in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and we are going to read from verse 16. Again here we are going to see this word archangel, Michael the archangel. The Bible is saying, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now listen, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So when this voice of the archangel, which is the voice of God, the voice of the Lord, shall be heard, the Bible is saying clearly that the dead in Christ shall rise. Now, let's make an overview of what we have studied from the Bible so far. So in heaven, we have seen two groups that were being developed. Michael and his angels, and the dragon and his angels. Now, the dragon is no other than Satan, the devil, the old serpent. And his angels, they were starting this war against God. Now, Michael in the Bible is being called an archangel. He is the captain, the general of the army of angels of God in heaven. Michael is also the one that is having sufficient power to resurrect the dead, even Moses. And when Christ will come the second time, the Bible is saying at his voice, those that have died in the faith of Jesus Christ, 
they will resurrect when they will hear the voice of the archangel. Now let's go again the Bible and see clearly at whose voice the dead, sh dead shall rise. Let's go together in the book of John. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. And we are going to read from there from verse 25, verse 28, and verse 29. John chapter 5. We want to make this topic clear like crystal, dear friends. Look what the Bible is saying in John chapter 5. And we are reading from here, verse 25. At whose voice the dead shall rise from the graves. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. So when the voice of the archangel, which is the voice of the Son of God, Michael, that is being translated in the Greek language, who is like God? The Bible is saying that the dead shall rise from the graves. Look in verse 28 of John 5. Verse 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So when the voice of the Son of God, Jesus, will be heard from heaven, the dead will resurrect. Jesus is the, is the archangel. Jesus is no other else than Michael that is being presented in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, in verse 7. Let's confirm again that Jesus himself, he said that he is the resurrection and the life. And all those that they will believe in him, they will resurrect in these last days. Let's go again in the Bible, in the book of John. John chapter 11, when we are going to read together from here, from verse 25. John 11, and we are reading from here, from verse 25. The Bible is saying, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, Though he were dead, yet he shall live. So we are going to make again an overview of the study so far. At the beginning in heaven, it was a war. Two companies, they have been developed. Satan and his angels. Michael and his angels. And Michael is no other than the Son of God, Jesus, as we know it from the New Testament. Now... When we are reading care carefully the Bible, Jesus himself said that at the moment he saw Satan with his own eyes thrown down from heaven on this earth. Let's go together in the book of Luke chapter 10, and we are going to read from there Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. This is a session when we are going to open the Bible more and more. I am so anxious, dear friends, to study the Bible. You know, when we are, I am traveling from church to church uh, in the world as an evangelist, medical missionary evangelist, I have the privilege to listen again uh, and again a lot of beautiful choirs that are singing in the churches. But there is a music in the church that God so loved. And that is the music of the pages of the Bible that are being opened again and again. This is that music, special music, that the children of God, they need to be aware. And we need to practice again and again, just like an instrument. We need to open the Bible. We need to be faithful students of the Word of God. Listen what the Bible is saying in the book of Luke chapter 10. And we are going to read from there from verse 17. The Bible is saying, and the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So Jesus is saying clearly to the disciple 
that at the beginning with his own eyes, he had this privilege to see Satan thrown down from heaven on this earth. Because he is Michael. He was the one that took uh, Satan and cast him out with his angels from heaven. Now, remember the principle that we have studied from the beginning. God is telling the truth, the end of all things from the beginning. So in the beginning of this great controversy, God was the one that win in this battle. Who will win in this battle in these last days? It will be only God. Jesus will be the one who will defeat against Satan and all his armies. All those people that are going to be deceived by his lies. Now, again we are going to read in the book of Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, our topic, Star Wars, in our series that we are going to have together, War in Heaven. Let's read again Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. The Bible is saying, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Do you see that Michael was having a company of angels near him, and Satan also having a company of angels near him? But is not the Bible saying that the angels at the beginning, all the angels, they have been created by the power and by the words of God. At the beginning, all the angels, they were bowing their knees and worship in spirit and truth. And they were more than willing and more than, than uh, happy to give their worship to God. But what happened in heaven? Let's confirm from the Bible very clearly that the angels are creatures. Angels have been created by the power of God, by the word of God. Let's go again in the Bible, because we are going to use not man's wor words. We are not going to use our opinions. We are not going to use our thoughts. We are not going to use our philosophy of the Bible. We are going to use simply the word of God that is being found in the Bible. Amen? Look what the Bible is saying in Psalms 148 148 division of psalms and we are going to read starting from verse 1 old testament for those that they don't know where is the book of psalms friends we are studying and if we are studying the past we have a glimpse of the future because god is telling the end from the beginning the bible is saying in psalms 148 starting at verse 1 praise it the lord praise it the lord from the heavens praise him in the highs praise him all his angels praise him all his hosts praise him sun and moon praise him all his stars of light praise him ye heavens of heavens and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were created. So you see here very clearly from the Bible. That the angels have been created by the word of God. God spoke and the angels appear. Angels are God's creation. I hope that this thing is very clear from the Bible. For your notes, you can read also Hebrews chapter 1, starting from verse 5, 6, 7, 8. Further, you will see that the Bible is making very clearly that angels are God's creation. Now, with this thing in mind, let's go again in the book of Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, and see the details. There in the Bible, we are seeing Michael and his angels. They were in a war with Satan and his angels. Those angels that have been created by God. So at the beginning of this war between good and evil, first time in heaven, the creature went against the creator. I'm going to repeat this thought 
because it is very important for us at this fourth meeting. At the beginning of this world in heaven, the creature, these angels that have been created by God, went against God the Creator. God is telling us the end from the beginning. And the same thing we are going to see in these last days. We are going to see God's creature, angels, men, that are going to go against the God of heaven and earth, God the Creator. Now, the Bible is saying very clearly to us that the beginning, these angels that have been created by God, they were having this great joy, happiness, in serving and obeying and worshiping the true God of heaven, God the Creator. But what happened in heaven that the part of the angels from heaven that once stood near God, they went and they were shaken and moved by Satan and came together in an alliance going against God. The Bible is saying clearly what happened and why these angels took this position not near God, not with Michael, but against God. The Bible is saying in Revelation chapter 12. Let's go together. Our message tonight, Star Wars. Let's go in Revelation chapter 12. And we are going to read from here from verse 3 and 4. The Bible is saying, And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. Now, this dragon, the Bible is telling us clearly that he's having a tail. Many people, they have read this Bible passage, and they have come to wrong conclusions. And uh, today we have so many animated movies, and we have so many um, drawings with so-called devil depicted him with corns and a tail that is being used to destroy the people in a literal sense. But the Bible is not speaking about this, dear friends. We need to go deeper beyond the surface. The Bible is saying that the dragon used his tail and took the third part of the angels from heaven with him even down there where he was cast out by Michael. Now, these stars, this third part of stars from heaven are representing angels. Angels that wants obey, angels that want love to serve the Lord, God the creator. But something happened and with his tail, the dragon, took them and went together in a war against God. Stars in the Bible are representing angels. So again, I am not willing to give my opinion on that. We'll use again the Bible to show clearly that this is the truth. Let's go together in the book of Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, and we are going to read from there verse 20. Stars in the Bible are a symbol of angels. The Bible is saying in Revelation chapter 1, and we are reading from here verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars, which thou sowest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. So stars in the Bible are a symbol of angels. The third part of stars, that means the third part of angels, they have been taken by this tail that was used by the dragon, by Satan, by the devil at the beginning when this war was starting in heaven. Now, let's ask the Bible, what is this tale a symbol in the Bible? Because we don't believe in these cartoons. We don't believe in these drawings that the people, they are putting again and again, depicting us, the devil, as having horns and tail. He laughs again and again when he sees the people presenting him like that. And many of the people today they don't even believe 
there is somebody with such power that is going against their soul. The Bible is saying in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 15, the Bible is saying clearly what the tail is symbolizing in Bible prophecy. Let's go together. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. And we are, going to, we are going to read from here verse 15. Our topic, Star Wars. Isaiah chapter 9. And we are going to read from here verse 15. The Bible is saying, listen, the ancient and honorable, he is the head. And the prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. So the tail in the Bible is a symbol of lies, deception, hypocrisy, that Satan used in heaven. And by these lies, these deceptions, the angel that once worshipped God the creator, now join with this creature in a war against God. The tail in the Bible is a symbol of lies and deception. Look what Jesus said about the devil in the book of John chapter 8, 44. John chapter 8, again, we want to put more Bible verses that we may have meet in due season and understand these last day events in which we are living in. The Bible is saying in John chapter 8, verse 44, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will ye you'll do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So Satan is the origin. He is the father of all the lies. He is the father of deception. Now, we are going again to our first foundation laid in this Bible study. Remember what we have discovered together. The Bible is saying clearly that God is telling us the end from the beginning. Now, in the beginning of this war between good and evil, two companies, they have been developed in heaven. Why? Because the angels of God, the angels that once stood near God, obeyed the Lord, were happy in worshiping the God of creation, they rebelled against God. Why? Because they have been deceived by the lies, by the tail of the dragon, and right now they took the position as they were shaken by the from the platform of, of truth, they stood near Satan and joined together in a war against God. Deception is the most important weapon that Satan has used in the past, in the beginning, and deception is the weapon that he will use in this last day. Now, let me confirm these things from the Bible regarding to these days in which we are living in. The Bible is saying that in these last days, we will hear the same teachings, the same sermons of Satan in heaven. By God's grace, in our next presentation, we will address a topic that is very interesting that we're going to have the title what was Satan's first sermon? And you'll be surprised, my dear friends, to see that this sermon is being preached again and again from the pulpits of many churches today. People are repeating the same words of Satan in heaven, but they don't understand they have been deceived. Satan is trying to deceive the whole world in these last days. Why? Because he is trying to engage the humanity in, in going against the true God, the God, the creator, in a final battle on this earth's history. Now, the Bible is saying in 1 Timothy chapter 4 regarding the last days. 1 Timothy chapter 4 regarding these last days. Listen what the Bible is saying here. 
in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4, and we are going to read verse 1. Listen carefully. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devil. When this thing will happen again? In the latter times, in the last days, people will heed these doctrines of devils. Satan will use again his tail, trying to deceive the humanity in going against the true God, in the creation of God, will go again against God the Creator. Now, will Satan use deception in these last days again? Will Satan use again in these last days lies, wonders, miracles to prepare the whole world in a war against the true God? God the Creator? Let's look from the Bible. Go to me in the book of Revelation, in the book of Revelation chapter 16, book of Revelation chapter 16, and we are going to read from there verse 13. Revelation chapter 16. This is the last book of the Bible. Revelation chapter 16. And when we want to read from there verse 13. Listen what the Bible is saying here regarding the work of Satan. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out from the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are spirits of devils. These spirits of devils, they are none else than those angels that have been thrown down from heaven, Satan with his angels. Now in what work they are being engaged? Remember that Satan in heaven was engaged in this work of deception using his tail, his lies, to create this battle against the true God, God the Creator. Now look what the Bible is saying. Verse 14. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. So why Satan is sending these unclean spirits like frogs, these, these spirits of devils, they are going to, into the whole world, even the kings, even the rulers of this earth, to prepare them, to deceive them by these lying wonders in a final war against the true God, the almighty God. Satan will use again and again deception. Look what the Bible is saying in the book of 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and we want to read starting from verse 8 to verse 10. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and we want to read from verse 8 to verse 10. The Bible is saying again and again, my friends, that deception will be the most important weapon that Satan is going to use in these last days. Deception. And some of the people, they are not aware of that. And if we don't study the Word of God, if we don't put our hands on the Bible and read with our own, with our own eyes, we will be deceived. And some of us, we are being deceived in a sincere way because we have not known what we have studied tonight. But by God's grace, we want that our eyes to be open and follow on that path that is going to light. The Bible is saying in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and we want to read starting at verse 8. The Bible is saying, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Verse 9, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. How will Satan work? Working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders 
and with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they may be saved. How will Satan work, try to deceive the whole world? Look what he is going to use. I am reading from verse 9. All power, signs, and lying wonders. Some people, they may read this Bible verse and say that Satan is not having power to do great wonders. Some people, they can look at this Bible verse and think that Satan is not having power to so-called heal the sick people. But the Bible is saying that Satan will work through lies, through wonders, miracles, preparing the minds of the people for final war against the true God, God the Creator. Because this was the problem in the beginning. And God is telling us the end from the beginning. If a tree is having a root of an apple tree, what type of fruits we will see in that tree in the future? We will see oranges or maybe avocados or maybe some other fruits. If the root of that tree is a root of an apple tree, the fruits that there will be in that tree, there will be apples. Now, the root of the problem, the root of this conflict from the beginning, this first war that was in heaven was a battle between the creature and God the creator, the creature, the creation of God, they went against God in a war. Why? Because they have been deceived. They have been taken by this pale, shaken from the foundation of true worship in heaven. And God is trying to save me and you. God is trying to open our eyes be because we are living in these last days where the people, they will hear these doctrines of devil. His tail will move again and again. Um, at a particular moment in my life, I was, witness, I was witnessing a thing that I was not even able to comprehend at that time. But immediately I made a parallel betwe between what I saw and what we are reading from the Bible. The Bible is calling Satan that old serpent. And we know that at the cross, Satan, Satan's head was bruised by the heel of Jesus. And at what point I was having this privilege to, to see a snake that was trying to run from some, from some people. He was catched. Somebody took his head off. But something interesting continued to happen with this snake. I was shocked to see that he was going around his tail till the sunset. And he was moving again and again, although his head was bruised. Even Jesus Christ that won that battle in heaven at the beginning, Jesus Christ that bruised the head of the serpent on the Calvary, with all this work done by Jesus, Satan already defeated at the cross. He is still moving his tail, trying to get as many as possible to destroy them and perish with him forever. Now, the Bible is saying in Matthew chapter 24, let's make a conclusion to our message as we are studying this important topic from our series, War in Heaven, with our first topic tonight, Star Wars, Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus is giving us the signs that we are going to see prior to his second coming. In Matthew chapter 24, this passage, this chapter in the Bible is being dedicated, all chapter, to present the condition of the earth prior to his second coming, the end of all things. And when Jesus was asked, Lord, by his disciples, give us a sign that we may understand that we are living in these last days, Jesus didn't start with global warming. No. Jesus didn't start with the floods. Jesus didn't start with the earthquakes, with the hurricanes, with all these things, bad things, diseases that are happening in the world. But the most important thing, 
the foundation that Christ spoke against, that Satan is going to use in these last days, are the, the most important weapon to destroy people, is deception. Look what the Bible is saying in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, and we want to read together from verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall this thing be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the, or of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So the first sign that Jesus is underlining regarding these last days, he's saying, if you want to understand that we are living in these last days, deception will be present all over the place. Why? Because Satan is trying to prepare the whole world in a final battle against the true God. God the creator. Now, verse 4 and 5. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Do you know, friends, that according to this Bible passage, some of the most dangerous people on the earth on these last days will be so-called Christians. Some of the most dangerous people in these last days that even Satan will use for his agenda, they will be the people that will profess to believe in Christ. Many shall come in my name, and many people will be deceived. Coming in my name, Jesus is saying. Look again in the book of Matthew chapter 24, and we want to read in verse 11. Again, we, Jesus is underlining this great sign of deception. Verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive Many, so will come many false Christ, people in the name of Jesus, but they are engaged in the work of deception. Some people, they do believe they, if they are participating in a church where the name Jesus is being pronounced, that means that Jesus is present there. No, my friends. The Bible is saying clearly that even Satan will use, like agents, people, that are going to work in Christ's name, but they have a hidden agenda. What is this hidden agenda? This agenda is to deceive as many people as possible. Many false Christ and many false prophets. Now, let's read Matthew 24, verse 24. The Bible is saying, For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So Satan will work through false Christ, false prophets, but as the time is going shorter and shorter and shorter because he knows that it's having a short time, now he is combining the forces. The deception it will be greater and greater and greater. Because he is trying to, to take the last harvest of souls that are not prepared. Souls that they don't want to repent and give their life to Jesus Christ. This is what the Bible is saying. Three times in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus is not repeating three times that we'll see earthquakes. Jesus is not repeating three times in this chapter that we'll see famine. Jesus is not repeating three times about diseases in these last days, Ebola and other types of disease. Jesus is mentioning again and again, repeat, repeating again and again, that we'll see deception all over the place. And this deception, it will be so 
worldwide that we may think that is nobody staying for Christ and his truth in these last days. Look what the Bible is saying, the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9. Look what the apostle John is saying regarding the work of deception that Satan is going to do in these last days. The Bible is saying, Revelation chapter 12, starting at verse 9. Look what the Bible is saying here. Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. Some of you may, be, you may think, so if he is deceiving the whole world, why we are studying the Bible? That means that even the preacher, he is deceived himself. Because the Bible here is saying that he is deceiving the whole world. My friends, the Apostle John was so overwhelmed, so surprised by this word deception that God presented in front of his eyes, this deception that Satan was doing, that he know this these words here, the whole world. But we need to understand that God is going to have a faithful remnant in these last days. The Bible is saying in 1 John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. Remember, Satan will deceive the whole world. Except who? Look what the Bible is saying. And we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. So the whole world is lying in wickedness, but there is a group, a remnant, a small group of people that are there from God. They are the seeds of the word of God in their hand, heart, and they cannot be deceived. My friends, in this occasion, as we want to conclude this uh, Bible study with the title Star Wars, we have understood some things regarding the first world in heaven. And it is so important for us to understand this foundation of the great, con great controversy. In the beginning, there have been two classes engaged in this world. Satan and his angels, Michael the Son of God, even Jesus, with his angels, they fought against each other. Who was the winning side? Who was the one that overcome Satan and his angels? Christ, the Son of God. And God is telling us the end from the beginning. We need to have hope in our hearts. Although this world is being deceived, Jesus will overcome. And he is appealing to the hearts of the people today. Because Christ is having a burden, not for, for destroying the people, like Satan. Jesus is having a desire that people to be saved. He wants them to be in that kingdom that was prepared from the beginning. But we cannot be saved if we are allowing ourselves to be deceived. How can we allow ourselves to be deceived? It is simply, if you let a man read from the Bible for you, you have great chances to be deceived. My friends, one of the simplest ways to lose salvation and eternal life is to put your salvation in the hands of another man. The Bible is saying that we need to know Christ personally. And if we don't want to be deceived, we need to spend more and more time with the Word of God. So tonight, in this occasion, as we are studying the God's Word, let me ask you this. How much time you are spending in God's Word? Are you being deceived? Are you preparing yourself to go against the true God? God the Creator in a last and final battle. Satan will do wonders all types of things to put the people, the whole world, near him. My decision tonight, and I hope this is your decision, is to stay near Christ. 
and we, we may be victorious through His grace and especially through His word. Because as we are having this world, this word in our hands, Satan is not able to deceive us. I want to read two more Bible passages and we'll pray together at the end of this Bible study. Look what the Bible is saying in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Look what the Bible is saying here. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So when Satan will have an advantage from us? If we are ignorant of his devices. If we don't understand how he worked in the beginning, we will be deceived. Paul is saying, Satan is not having nothing to gain from me. He's not having any advantage from me. Why? Because all the time I'm having more steps than him in advance. Why, Paul? Because I'm studying the word of the living God. This is the book that is making Satan to tremble again and again. And it's God's desire that you and me to spend more and more time reading the word of the living God. May God bless you, friends, and we may be prepared for what is going to take place in this world like an overwhelming surprise. We are almost here. Two camps are being developed again. Michael and his servants, Satan and his servants, they will be again in the final clash, a final war. But Jesus will win again. May God help you. May God help me to be on the winning side. Amen.